Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Oh, oh no. Shit. Look what we've done. We've called upon a malevolent ghoul who specializes in annoying the absolute hell out of people. And that ghoul's name is Lauren Bober. <laughs> we've talked about her enough on this show, so you probably don't need an extensive refresher, but she's the Republican representative for Colorado's 3rd Congressional District. She owned and operated a gun-themed restaurant called Shooter's Grill, which at one point gave dozens of people food poisoning. She's a far-right QAnon weirdo who holds every outrageous and offensive conservative view possible, including an attempt to name the AR-15 the, quote, national gun of the United States. She opposes same-sex marriage. She uh, opposes abortion access while also becoming a grandmother at the ripe old age of 36. She's faced legal trouble many times in the past, and despite all of this, is still somehow a representative for old-school conservative values because nothing matters anymore, and cruelty is the only point. Yeah, she, she's very bad, but also, she's very bad. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, well, her most recent headlines include the now-famous dust-up with former bestie Marjorie Taylor Greene over who would pass and get credit for filing baseless articles of impeachment against President Biden. You bitch! Yeah. It resulted in the quote that we've been parroting since it landed in news articles back in June. The back and forth began when Bobert approached Green, then seated in the chamber, and confronted her over statements you made about me publicly. All three of the sources said Green called Bobert a bitch. <laughs> One of the sources said Green called her a little bitch. According to two of the sources, Green then stood up and alleged that Bobert copied my articles of impeachment, to which the Colorado lawmaker fired back that she hadn't even read Green's resolution. I've donated to you, I've defended you, but you've been nothing but a little bitch to me. Green told Bobert, according to a source who witnessed the exchange, and you copied my articles of impeachment after I asked you to co-sponsor them. The name calling was confirmed by another GOP lawmaker and another source who witnessed the exchange. I heard Marjorie call Bobert a bitch right to her face, one <laughs> GOP lawmaker said. Well, now Bobert is back in the headlines once again for being a generally disgusting sociopath who has no empathy for those around her and ruining a nice night out at a musical theater for anyone with an earshot, or uh, breath shot, I guess. Uh, she, you know, I could fix her. <laughs> I, <can. laughs> I feel like I could fix her. Honestly, the behavior that we're about to mention sounds exactly like something that Lauren Boebert would do. It's and, some real trashy shit. <laughs> yeah, and there's security footage and witness interviews that seem to back all this up, so let's just dive right into Boebert's big night out at Beetlejuice the Musical. <laughs> Which, I didn't know there was a Beetlejuice musical. It just played here at Pantages. Oh, because, yeah, it must have, because what the hell is it doing in Denver? In Denver. But Denver. Uh, it's a traveling <laughs> musical, but it is, it's just especially funny. Like, I don't know if there's anything wrong with Be the Beetlejuice musical. In fact, I have friends who went to it out here and said they had a fun time. But it's just, it's, it's particularly funny that this is the musical that she decided to go to out of any touring musical that she could have had. Uh, a big public blow up act. Maybe she's a big Tim Burton fan. Apparently she's such a big fan that uh, allegedly she was singing along to songs that only exist in the musical, meaning she had probably been listening to this on uh, like Spotify or CD oh, so leading she, up to it. She's one of those freaks like my wife who uh, memorizes entire musical soundtracks without ever having actually seen the musical. It's sociopathic. That wife's name, Joel Rubin. Uh, but yeah, so she, this is her big night out at Beetlejuice. Here's local outlet, the Denver Post with the details. U.S. Representative Lauren Boebert was escorted out of a Sunday night performance of the Beetlejuice musical in downtown Denver, accused by venue officials of vaping, <laughs> singing, recording, and causing a disturbance during the performance. In an incident report shared with the Denver Post on Tuesday afternoon, officials with Denver Arts and Venues wrote that two patrons were asked to leave the city-owned Buell Theater during the performance of the touring Broadway show. They previously were issued a warning during the intermission regarding behavior that prompted three complaints from other theater goers, the report says. This isn't just one person being like, uh, Ma'am, could you stop? Yeah. Multiple people at intermission were like, if she's doing this at the Beetlejuice musical, you have to imagine every time Lauren Boebert has been to a movie theater. Oh my God. It's, Could you imagine? Yeah. In fact, like think of all the bad experiences you've had at movie theaters. There's a non-zero chance that that was actually Lauren Boebert. Yeah, could be. Doing all that. 
Anyway, it continues. The incident report states that after receiving the intermission warning, about five minutes into the second act, security officials received another complaint about the patrons being loud and at the time they were recording. I love the just five minutes after the intermission. Like, all right. All right. Yeah. Me, woo! Uh, yeah, we've received... We, we've received... I'm in Congress! <laughs> Suck my dick! Uh, we've received multiple complaints about this woman, but we're, there's no way she's going to continue this behavior after we told her to stop. Oh, what? It's been five minutes since uh, the musical restarted up again and she's already back at it? Now, I got to get this on tape. I've been looking forward to this musical for months. I'm just surprised she didn't sneak a gun in. That would have been right in line because she uh, her multiple typical... times tried to sneak a gun into uh, into the U.S. Capitol. Yes, and it was a, it was a big problem. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, taking pictures or recording is not permitted at shows. No shit. The report quotes one of the ushers. They told me they would not leave. I told them that they need to leave the theater, and if they do not, they will be trespassing. The patrons said they would not leave. I told them I would be going to get Denver police. They said, "Go get them." <laughs> The report said after the two patrons were escorted out and reached the building's vestibule, they resisted leaving and said stuff like, do you know who I am? And I am on the board and I will be contacting the mayor. In further reporting from the Post, one witness claims that they asked Bobert to stop vaping around her because she was pregnant. <laughs> the uh, famously pro-life Bobert allegedly refusing to stop vaping. Around the pregnant woman. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Well, it's your fault for not having children uh, in your teens. Yeah. Like me. Mm -hmm. I'm a 36-year-old grandma. Yes. Uh, also, it, it, we get to it in just a second, but the... So, first of all, the person she was on a date with, or that she's been dating, is a Democrat. Which I... That is... I looked into this, and they're like, well, I don't know. We always... He just seemed like he probably is a Democrat. Yeah. Who the fuck knows? Yeah. But I, I do just love the idea that even if it's just, you know, token party registration, um, so many fucking right-wing dudes are probably fucking pissed yeah. about, what a waste. Yeah. Oh, why is she dating that cuck I got and a not gun me? Rack in my truck. Ever since, ever since she announced her divorce six months ago, I've been like, waiting for my, my chance. And there she is, fucking that Democrat. This is just like Ann Coulter, uh, only dating uh, people that she is politically opposed to, and in some cases, getting down and dirty with. It, is, uh, it is a fetish. Yeah, it is weird. The, um, the hate fuck. But, oh, yeah, so that guy, uh, apparently, after the lady was like, can you please stop vaping? I'm pregnant. Uh, the, her date, Bobert's date, was like, all right, hun, can I buy you a drink or something? And she's like, I'm pregnant. I can't drink alcohol. <laughs> uh, so Bobert and her boyfriend were trying to kill that baby. Oh. Uh, so Bobert didn't care if she ruined the musical Beetlejuice playing at the Buell Theater for anyone else. And she certainly didn't care if the pregnant woman sitting behind her had to breathe in her secondhand smoke from a vape pen. The woman sitting directly behind Bobert shared her story with the Post on the condition of anonymity out of fear that there would be backlash from the congresswoman and her supporters. The woman described the evening as surreal. She didn't even recognize Bobert as Colorado's congresswoman who represents the Western Slope and Southern Colorado. Quote, these people in front of us were outrageous. I've never seen anyone act like that before, the woman who lives in Denver and is in her 30s said. It wasn't until later during the play that someone informed her that the misbehaving theater goer was, in fact, Bobert, a member of Congress. The woman says Bobert took multiple long videos during the first half of the performance. When she asked Bobert to stop vaping, the congresswoman simply said, no. <laughs> At intermission, I asked, are there any other seats available? Can we sit somewhere else? The woman said, the usher said, you're not the first complaint we had. When the woman returned with her husband to their seats, she said Bobert called her a sad and miserable person. Oh, come on, Lauren. Quote, the guy she was with offered to buy me and my husband cocktails. I'm pregnant, she said. But the behavior continued with Bobert using her phone to record several segments of the second half of the show. Uh, and, and again, I've said this even at, even at concerts where everything is raucous yeah. and everyone's jumping around, having a good time. The, the last thing you want to do is stare at someone's phone while yeah. there's a live performance happening in front of it. Well, in li live theater especially. It's, yeah. a, it's an immersive experience. Um, you, you know. You, it is distracting. Yeah. You, the, 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 the magic of the theater is that, uh, you know, it's, it's a stage. It's not, it's not realistic, but due to the, the performances and just the atmosphere, you're drawn into 
an artificial world that comes to life right there on the stage. And that's completely ruined when some bitch is sitting in front of you with her fucking cell phone. Yeah. It's just go watch the movie. But the movie doesn't have the songs. Well, it does. It has Mr. And Tally. It has Mr. Tally Man. And it has Alec Baldwin. So as we previously uh, stated, it was at this point, uh, it well into the second half of the show when she was recording it, that Bobert was asked to leave the performance finally. So, so uh, that's uh, all. You know, the the footage is great. Uh, you can see her throwing her little tantrum, and uh, certainly uh, something will come of this. The the voters will wag their fingers. At, well, she's not. I she mean, wasn't even in their district at the time. She's in yeah. Denver, so it, yeah, she's not from Denver. And probably not too welcome around Denver either. She's from Rifle. Literally from the town of Rifle. Yeah. Well, also, uh, we'll get to Gates in a second. But both Gates and Bobert have the same weird uh, Batman villain eyebrow thing going on. And a bunch of uh, uh, doctors were on Twitter this week being like, you can clearly see that these are like botched Botox injections. And they go into the details of why it looks like that. Uh, um, I don't get into it because I really don't give a shit about their stupid plastic surgery or they've all had beauty it. enhancements. Everyone's but... at, the, the craziest thing is like Joe Biden clearly had like a fuck ton of plastic surgery mm -hmm. between 2016 and 2020. Yeah. And no one talks about it. No. He doesn't look the same. No. At all. His eyes are completely different. He got like a facelift or something. He got a facelift, and they also like they just stretched the whole. Yeah, fucking that's what face I'm saying. Out. Yeah, like it's, <sighs> but it, he doesn't look anything like he did before. No, uh, but yeah, it is just funny that uh, in particular their uh, beautification makes them look more evil. But meanwhile, Mitt Romney, he's like fucking eighty and looks great because yeah. no alcohol and only hot, dogs. no caffeine and hot dogs for every meal and sandwich ham or salmon hamburgers and special underwear that you sleep in to keep you. Nice and normal. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, on the other side of the political spectrum, we have the president's son, Hunter Biden, getting indicted by Republicans for uh, actually a very strange set of charges that conservatives would typically fully support with just no questions asked. Uh, possession of a firearm. Yeah, I thought that was their whole thing. Oh, gosh, he has a gun? No, mm -hmm. we don't. We hate well, guns over here in the mm -hmm. Republican Party. So to be clear, we're not downplaying the charges or legality of what he did. It's just pointing out that it's pretty ironic for the members of the conservative party to suddenly become very concerned over who is and isn't allowed to possess a firearm. Mm -hmm. Also, this indictment has absolutely nothing to do with the message that they're trying desperately to, to get across, that there's shady business dealings between President Biden, his son Hunter, and nations like China and Ukraine, and there's this whole corrupt thing happening. Mm -hmm. This indictment, it's about gun possession and nothing else, but they still get to excitedly claim that they have indicted a Biden while their brains drip slowly from their nostrils. We got them, everyone. Ears and eyes. Mm -hmm. Here's Rolling Stone with more on this Biden indictment. President Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, has been indicted on three counts related to possessing a firearm while under the influence of narcotics. Earlier this month, special counsel David Weiss indicated that he was preparing to indict Biden on charges related to unlawful gun possession. Weiss was appointed special counsel after a D.C. judge rejected a plea deal that would have allowed Biden to plead guilty to misdemeanor charges related to his taxes and the possession of the weapon. In 2018, the Justice Department opened an investigation into Hunter Biden's finances amid allegations of money laundering. The FBI was ultimately unable to find evidence indicating Biden had engaged in money laundering, and the case transitioned into an investigation of Biden's tax history. Hunter Biden has long been a focus of Republican efforts to dig up dirt on President Biden. Three separate congressional committees are currently investigating the younger Biden in hopes of proving allegations of corruption against the president. Both the House Judiciary and House Ways and Means Committee alleged that the Biden administration had improperly interfered with the IRS and Justice Department's investigation into Hunter Biden in order to secure him a favorable plea deal. On Tuesday, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy announced that he would move to open an impeachment inquiry into President Biden. Okay. Yeah, things moving fast. Go get him, Tiger. Mm -hmm. And by the way, that impeachment inquiry comes after weeks of pressure from the, the more deranged members of the Republican Party who are demanding that McCarthy move forward with an impeachment or they will remove him as Speaker of the House. This, it's 2022 all over again. Yeah, if you don't uh, remember for some reason, <laughs> uh, it took uh, McCarthy <laughs> multiple votes to even get into that the was position. And, and presumably this is what they're finally like pushing in their chips and saying, hey, 
remember, we finally voted for you. This is what we want in return. Yeah, so it didn't take very long at all to point out the irony in this situation because McCarthy moved to open the impeachment inquiry without a House vote, despite saying just days prior that if we move forward with an impeachment inquiry, it would occur through a vote on the floor of the People's House and not through a declaration by one person. The House Speaker said, an impeachment inquiry is a serious matter and the Republicans would not take it lightly or use it for political purposes. Mm. Oh, sure. Yeah. The inquiry comes as Marjorie Titan Green vowed to withhold funding and shut down the government if the speaker didn't act, and also as a result of uh, Botox demon Matt Gates threatening to remove McCarthy as speaker. We have yeah. a functioning Republican Party, a well-oiled yeah. machine, and I'm, I'm worried. <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, was it John Fetterman this week when they asked him about it? Oh, <laughs> oh, don't do it. Oh, yeah, no. it's good to see. Like I, I hadn't been keeping up with him, but he's seen. He seems like he's like back. Yeah. Like the, the neurons in his brain are finally like healed from that stroke he had. Yeah, I love the take of uh, this is why we need more normal guys in, <laughs> in, in government. More normal people, please. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yes, let's do a... a I wouldn't call a seven foot tall ogre a normal person, but... Uh, yeah, uh, normal brain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but let's do a quick non-political story. A story about dudes being bros. Bros being dudes and the media completely failing to do any type of critical thinking before running an outlandish story that actually had a pretty simple explanation. So here you go. Virgin Media News from Ireland recently reported on a giant hole in the ground that local astronomy enthusiasts concluded could be the aftermath of a cosmic event. And yes, there is video of the report to back it up, which we will attempt to show you now unless it gets copyright struck. Here you go. It's a huge, mysterious crater that looks out of this world. But is it? The unusual hole on Port Marnock Beach stopped local astrophysics enthusiast Dave Kennedy in his tracks yesterday, and he's certain the small but heavy rock inside it came from up above. As you can tell by here, there's a scorch mark on this side here, so that would have been at the angle that it came down at. And uh, it is weighty. I'm not sure if it's composition, but we're definitely going to have to find out. The striking hole soon caught the attention of passers-by, many hoping that what they're witnessing is the aftermath of a once-in-a-lifetime cosmic event. There has been no confirmation that this is the site of a meteor strike, but Dave is optimistic. And only about a month ago I was watching a documentary from NASA on exactly what you're looking at behind you. So when I looked at it and saw how uniform it is and the blast crater, I knew immediately that I was looking at it as an impact site. So pretty interesting stuff here. And it, of course, lines up beautifully with the world's obsession with all things extraterrestrial right now. Side note. Yes, we are going to talk about the alien bodies, but we're saving it for Weekly Weird News. Now back to the hole. Unfortunately for this outlet and the local astronomy enthusiasts, this giant hole in the ground is the result of nothing more than a bunch of dudes doing dude things. In this particular case, just digging a hole for the hell of it. Hell yeah! We love digging holes. Yeah, usually at the beach, but you know, you can do it anywhere. Yeah, this was at the beach too, but uh, uh, yeah, there's there's something there's something in our brains that just we live to dig, we yeah. yearn for the hole. <laughs> yes, uh, it, there there was a post I don't even know six months or a year ago where some woman on Twitter was trying to figure out why uh, people were obsessed with it and everyone just replied with it's fun. Look, it's fun. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe you find some treasure. Yeah, you never know what's going to be under there. It's the mystery. Yeah, it's the physical activity. It's the camaraderie yeah. of, of doing something like you, that with your friends. Most people think that the ground is here, but actually... The ground's under here. You can go way down, way further down than you think. Nobody thought of this. All just by moving some dirt from here to there. Yes. Well... So anyway, yeah, the, the myth here was busted thanks to video footage of the hole being dug, making its way to social media, literally because the dudes were proud of the hole they dug, and they should be. Yeah. It's a fine hole. <laughs> <laughs> just... From the Twitter account who posted the, the follow-up video... Lads, I'm in bits. Virgin Media News is after reporting on a hole on post Marnock Beach that could be the aftermath of a cosmic event. Some fellas literally dug it the day before with a kid's shovel. <laughs> the way your man was talking about the rock being an asteroid had me in tears. And here's the video, which is enhanced by the fact that the on-screen text over the video simply reads, the hole we dug on Saturday. <laughs> It's just uh, them showing it off and being like, yep, here's that hole we, we were talking about. Nobody believed us. So hell yeah, dudes rock. Yeah. Digging holes is fun. Interesting. It's a great workout. Yeah. 
They say touch grass, but you can also touch sand. You touch can dirt. touch beneath the grass. That's yeah. right. But remember that it can be dangerous in populated areas, so make sure you call before you dig. And uh, yeah, there's probably some 311 type number in your area where you can call and make sure you're not going to dig straight into a water pipe or buried electrical wires. That would be bad. Um, I recently dealt with this, and I discovered that they only tell you, they only can account for uh, the main utility line on the street or behind your house and where it hits your meters. Mm -hmm. Anything else, if, for example, if perhaps you live in a 120-year-old house that uh, has a lot of weird shit buried underground, like mysterious just copper pipes, seemingly dozens hey, of copper pipes. That's worth a lot of money, baby. Uh, I don't know if they're... Actually, no. I think they're probably lead or cast iron. Oh, that's buried gold almost. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, found a lot of pipes, and I, I need to get like a plumber to just come out and be like, hey, can you find out if those are like active? Can I cut them? Yeah. I want to get rid of them. There's a, they sh there's no reason they should be where they are, so I'm but assuming... Look, just like uh, everyone else, you had a blast digging a hole and seeing what was in there. Oh, I've spent this whole summer digging holes. In my parents' backyard, there is definitely... Uh, well, I know for a fact that I buried my own time capsule when I was a kid. So that's... There's a Tootsie Roll thing somewhere. Isn't there water like six inches below the dirt in Florida? It's like though? two feet. Oh, okay. Uh, there's like matchbox cars, Hot Wheels, and a... I would have to dig up my entire parents' backyard to find this because I don't remember where I put it, but it, like one of those Tootsie Roll bank tins that you get for Christmas, I put a bunch of shit in that and buried it one day. How do they build foundations? They In Florida, they... We're off on a tangent, but <laughs> in Florida, they, they build retention ponds and lakes in neighborhoods, and they use all of that dirt that builds an artificial lake to put the houses up like a foot or two off oh, of the foundation. Oh, I see. That so like sense. every big neighborhood in Florida so has All the houses a big are actually elevated. Okay. Yeah. Well, the smart ones are. <laughs> yeah. I, pre-1980, it was anything goes. You might want to elevate a little bit more, folks. Yeah, get those babies on stilts. Anyways, we got more news for you in just a sec. And if you're going to dig a hole that deep, you might want to, you know, call for backup. But luckily, today's sponsor can help you to do that affordably because our sponsor today is Mint Mobile. Yeah, how about, how about that lead-in, huh? Yeah, ring, ring. From the gas pump to the grocery store, your utility bills and favorite streaming services, inflation is everywhere. Make it stop, please, mm -hmm. please. Thankfully, there's one company out there that's giving you a much needed break. It's Mint Mobile. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. For people looking for extra savings this year, Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for just 15 bucks a month. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And it's true. Popped in the, uh, uh, transferred the SIM, used it uh, when I was out of town, worked just as fine as my uh, current carrier. So there you go. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all of your existing contacts. Switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get your plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash newsdump. That is mintmobile.com slash newsdump. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash newsdump. And now we can get back into the news. We have a few updates to stories that we've been covering, but first, some gaming news. What's up, gamers? What's up? And would you believe that another company in the gaming space has made an unnecessary, short-sighted, and widely hated move in order to milk even more money out of the industry? Would it surprise you even further to hear that this executive came to his current position from a previous executive position at Electronic Arts? No, that wouldn't surprise me one bit. Shocking, we know. But this week, the game engine Unity and their CEO, John Ricitiello, Ricitiello, formerly the CEO of EA, announced a new pricing model based on the number of installs for any game developed using their engine after a certain threshold. This seems to be yet another example of companies having just the brilliant idea to retroactively make using their product prohibitively expensive for everyone. Similar to the Twitter and Reddit API fiascos that have predated this particular move, uh, the result of this price hike would not only run most indie developers out of business entirely, it would theoretically anchor them with massive amounts of debt for games that have already been released for years. Yeah, I, I tried to wrap my head around this plan, and I uh, I don't understand. Basically, is Unity having money troubles? I is the current uh, plan not working for them? No, but wouldn't I it be understand. nice to have a little bit more? 
So yeah, obviously this announcement was met with widespread backlash from gamers and developers alike. And we will link to uh, one thread in particular in the description below because they collected a growing list of official statements from developers who in many cases stated that they would not be able to afford to keep their games available, run demos, or include their games in promotional sales, charity bundles, or any other scenario where someone has the audacity to install their game for any reason. And with more on this, here's The Verge. We are introducing a Unity runtime fee that is based upon each time a qualifying game is downloaded by an end user, the company shared on its blog. We chose this because each time a game is downloaded, the Unity runtime is also installed. Unity went on to explain in detail how this new program works, but here's the gist. Before a game is charged with these new fees, it must meet a specific revenue and download threshold that changes based on which tier of Unity subscription a developer pays for. And the article displays the entire Unity fee breakdown in a handy graphic. It's obviously linked down below, but it continues by adding that the news was met with fear, anger, and disgust from the game development community. The primary complaint is that these changes would be particularly harmful to solo, indie, marginalized, and mobile developers. Of particular note is the fact that Unity is assessing these fees based on the number of installs a game has without seeming to account for the many reasons, legal or illegal, a game might have multiple installs without multiple purchases. After a game meets the revenue threshold, if its downloads far outstrip its revenue generation, a developer will be on the hook to pay. Pirated games, demos, games downloaded across multiple devices, and games offered on subscription services like Game Pass are all potentially affected by these new fees. Additionally, there's the concern that malicious actors could use this information to run up charges by continuously downloading and re-downloading games as a form of protest or griefing. Yeah, I, I mean, there's definitely several games that I have downloaded, deleted, and then re-downloaded uh, year after year Yeah, for, in Steam, just because, you know, I'm not playing it now, but then a little while later, I'm like, yeah, let's jump back in. And, uh, yeah, it's fucking stupid to yeah. imagine that... Uh, well, also, the, the, this would theoretically charge the developers for installs of any pirated copy of yeah, their game. that's insane. Yes, so, yeah, Unity has updated their announcement and started to uh, walk back uh, some of these install fees, but uh, it's done little to calm the nerves of developers, some of whom have been working on games for years that aren't out yet and had no heads up mm. about these changes and are now locked into whatever Unity wants because the other option is just throwing thousands of hours of work in the trash. Do you know what the current, like, uh, what the current revenue sharing model is? I think they pay a subscription fee. Yeah. to use it uh, throughout the entirety of the game life cycle. But I, I have never heard of... So they're tacking on this just, like, they're basically making a royalty system. Yes, and they're also doing away with uh, a couple of the subscription tiers for developers that kind of make this a little more mandatory. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it just seems like a really bad, short-sighted idea to for quick financial gain by a CEO who's going to go, look at all this money I made. Well, see you later. Huh. Uh, but yes, the the idea that a bunch of these uh, developers would have to come out of their own wallet retro like retroactively for games purchased years ago or games that are pirated or any other reason. Like imagine doing like the Humble Bundle or something and you sell like a million copies yeah, well, and that, everyone just waits to download it that's the and first, you're giving it away for a discount. That's the first thing is that this, this completely disincentivizes... Um, Sales, yeah, of any kind, or Game Pass, or which means I, I ain't Plus. never playing that because yeah. uh, I I'm always looking for deals. Deals are my art form. I go on, I believe it's called Is There Any Deal dot com or something like that. Yeah, and any game I'm wanting, I look at that. They got a graph showing a price history. I'm like, okay, so every like two or three months, it drops down to like. Uh, some crazy amount. Yeah. So I'll just uh, stick around here, maybe set up an alert, and beep, bop, boop. I'm saving money, folks. Yeah, but you're putting companies out of business now. By I doing guess it. I am. I got to stop. It's like uh, one of my favorite games of the of, uh, the past year or two, uh, Cult of the Lamb. They basically posted a statement that was like, well, we're deleting the game. <laughs> they, were, they were doing it in jest yeah. to make a point. But they were like, as of January 1st, we're just going to delete the game. Because they can't afford to keep and it operational. And Unity, I believe, is is favored more by like smaller indie projects because mm -hmm. uh, most of the big projects use um, Unreal. Unreal, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's especially funny that they'd be going after their clients like this. From from the big <laughs> brains down at Electronic Arts, come an executive who's got a bunch of big brain ideas. Well, anyways, yeah. While we're on the topic of gaming. Looks like 
FaZe Clan is finally essentially worthless as a as a company just you know after being listed on the stock market and then having to watch the value of that stock completely crater ever since it was listed. FaZe Clan? What are you doing there on that stock market? Yeah, who could have seen this coming? It's <laughs> almost like we reported on this the day that it was announced that their uh, SPAC was going live. Yeah. The, the, uh, what are you doing there? Yeah. What are you doing on the stock market, FaZe Clan? Come on. Yeah. With more on the outrageous overvaluation, overspending, and overconfidence at FaZe Clan, here's Bloomberg with a headline that doesn't really mince words. From $1 billion to almost worthless, FaZe Clan runs out of hype. Three months after its July 2022 debut on the NASDAQ, FaZe Holdings Inc. threw an exclusive party at a San Diego nightclub, hiring the rapper Travis Scott to promote its stable of video game stars and YouTube personalities. Social media influencers mingled with gamers and expensive streetwear. Many looked bored as they filmed the event for their online channels. Well past midnight, Scott appeared for a 15-minute show, his voice barely audible over the thumping bass. The party, which cost $1.7 million, got the company and a sponsor's name in hundreds of Google search results, YouTube videos, and Instagram stories. Lee Trink, FaZe's chief executive officer at the time, hailed the event as a great success. Quote, we achieved all of the things we would have hoped for, including making money, he said in an interview after the party. But with losses mounting and the shares tumbling, the company fired Trink, 55, on September 9th, replacing him on an interim basis with Chief Financial Officer Christoph Pockler. Interviews with seven former employees describe a mismanaged organization marked by poor spending decisions, excessive pay, and expansion into unprofitable categories like esports. Why am I experiencing this, this profound sense of deja vu right now? Every <laughs> single company does the exact same thing and they never learn. Everyone's doing the machinima speed run. Yeah, well, no one it's ever learns. Thing. No one ever learns because <laughs> all of the investors and advertisers and everyone keep falling for it every time. Well, they keep falling for it every time because the parties are always great. They're, they're great parties. Folks. And as long as you don't stop and think, hey, wait, who's paying for this? <laughs> <laughs> as long as that thought never crosses your mind, yeah, you're like, well, the parties are awesome. So that the, the business, good times this, will <laughs> never end. <laughs> Anyway, the company, which employed 112 people at year end, has been enmeshed in controversies involving its online personalities and announced two rounds of layoffs this year. Los Angeles-based FaZe reported a $48.7 million loss from operations last year. Holy shit. After initially projecting that it would debut on the stock market with a $1 billion valuation, its shares have tumbled to $0.18 cents from over $20. <laughs> Jesus. Management, meanwhile, is evaluating its options, including a possible sale of the company, Trink said before he left. Yeah, I'll buy it. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery is going to step right in. I mean, they would be dumb enough to do it. Yes, they would. Um, hey, David Zaslav, I got this great plan for how you uh, how you keep the content flowing during this strike. <laughs> Gamers. FaZe Clan. Uh, the Bloomberg article itself is very long, very detailed and fascinating, and you should absolutely read the entire thing. But PC Gamer snagged a few more of the juicy details from it in their reporting, and both are linked below. Meanwhile, FaZe was spending money like it was going out of fashion. It had a $60,000 a month rental bill for various luxury properties used to film its videos and house staff, including one mansion that was once home to Justin Bieber. Trink himself had a diamond F necklace in the shape of the FaZe logo. Stars like Nick, Nick Merckx, Kolchev were given multi-year contracts worth $500,000 a year. In 2022, Trink was paid $731,000. <laughs> Snoop Dogg's short-lived collaboration with FaZe saw the rapper receive $2.6 million in restricted stock, which is worth nothing now. Uh, Trink also apparently brought his pet Pitbull to work, where, <laughs> per Bloomberg, oh, no. it bit at least one staffer, Trink acknowledged. <sighs> Quote, we weren't throwing money in the garbage, said Trink. We were creating a mythology. We were telling a story. Well, now Trink is fired, so myth, mythology busted. Again. But I'm sure it was fun while it lasted. Yeah, everyone really enjoyed that meteoric rise, that completely uh, unjustified meteoric rise. It is also, they're LA based, right? Yeah, there's, uh, I mean, I'm sure it's public information, but they're, they're placed, their production studios in Hollywood. They, uh, like, that's another thing. It's like, you could be doing this fucking anywhere. And like, even if you want to stay in Southern California, you could be saving so much money by just literally go 10 miles in a radius outside of Move that of headquarters Hollywood. to San Fernando's beautiful valley. 
Uh, yes. Yeah, I know. Yes. Yeah. Even uh, celebrities are smart enough to like go on their production companies in yeah. the valley. Yeah. Uh, also, they had the various phase houses or whatever. Uh, and in the in the Bloomberg article, I didn't really get into it because I don't even like you know mentioning this guy's name. He's quite like Beetlejuice in that sense. <laughs> but uh, apparently, Sam Pepper was working as a consultant at Phase. Oh yeah, he's and got a lot like, of great ideas. That Sam Pepper. Multiple business decisions uh, relied on uh, brain trust. Hold Sam on, Pepper. before we pull the trigger on this, let's run it by Sam Pepper. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. So uh, again, read the whole Bloomberg article. It's very long, but uh, fun reading. Yeah. But now it's time for all those amazing updates from stories that we've been covering this week. And it looks like people are walking back their statements, issuing apologies, and starting to realize how stupid and outrageous some of their statements were. So first up, the out-of-touch millionaire who was famous for saying that millennials should stop buying avocado toast if they want to afford a home. He was back in the news this week for some generally ghoulish quotes about how everyone's lazy, entitled, and has no work ethic, and that's why they aren't financially successful. Also adding that those people should lose their jobs, because what the world needs is more unemployment in order to give power back to the big corporations mm -hmm. and, you know, put the fear of God back into the working class who just has it way too easy. Mm -hmm. Well, um, hey guys, he's sorry. Yeah. Sorry for saying that and making everyone mad at him. Probably not sorry for, like, legitimately believing what he says, though, yeah. but he's sorry. He swears. Here's Vice with the update. Tim Gurner, a millionaire Australian housing developer famous for overestimating the impact of avocado <laughs> toast on millennial household budgets, has apologized for a bizarre and power-mad rant calling for a 50% jump in unemployment for arrogant workers. Quote, At the AFR Property Summit this week, I made some remarks about unemployment and productivity in Australia that I deeply regret and were wrong, Gurner said in a statement sent to Motherboard by a representative. There are clearly important conversations to have in this environment of high inflation, pricing pressures on housing and rentals due to a lack of supply and other cost of living issues. My comments were deeply insensitive to employees, tradies and families across Australia who are affected by these cost of living pressures and job losses, Gurner wrote, using the term for tradespeople in Australia. I want to be clear. I do appreciate that when someone loses their job, it has a profound impact on them and their families, and I sincerely regret that my words did not convey empathy for those in that situation. Okay, buddy. Yeah, sure. This is absolutely not just PR uh, and something that you actually believe, but uh, totally a sincere apology that yeah. everyone can trust. It just came out of your mouth that way. Yeah, you, you, heard, it, you heard it wrong. Yeah. Fuck you. Anyways, in other apology news, my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell, has made some statements about those transcripts and video footage that were posted online of his depositions with those Dominion lawyers. If for some reason you missed it, uh, Mike Lindell was such a dick to Dominion's lawyers that they had to depose him three times. They're trying to depose him again, and one of the court reporters refused to come back into work because the job of transcribing Lindell's outbursts was too difficult. Mm -hmm. He's sort of apologizing for the way he acted, but mainly because he's upset that he, ha he had to resort to using swear words. That's just how dang across. upset he was. So what's hilarious about this is that in his sort of apology, which aired on Alex Jones's show, so we cannot show the footage. No. But uh, Lindell literally said the same thing that we joked about him saying on the episode from earlier this week. Essentially, I'll make fun of me all you want, but you leave my pillows out of it. Yeah, he he pretty much said that. So here's I'm fair game, but those pillows, so much work went into those pillows. And they are not lumpy, goddammit. Right, here's Newsweek. Yeah. Mike Lindell has said he acted out of character after footage <laughs> of the MyPillow CEO reacting furiously to being accused of producing lumpy pillows at a court deposition in March went viral on social media. The clip appeared to be from footage recorded on March 8th during the first deposition in a defamation case brought against Lindell by Eric Coomer. <laughs> Coomer, <laughs> the former chief executive of Dominion Voting Systems. The company provided voting machines used in the 2020 presidential election, and some Donald Trump supporters, including Lindell, have been accused of spreading discredited claims that these were used in a plot to rig the results in favor of Joe Biden. Quote, you can attack me. I can take that. I can take it. You start attacking my pillows, my employees. I got a big problem with that, he told presenter Alex Jones on Monday. On Monday, Lindell discussed his outburst during an appearance on Alex Jones's InfoWars show, commenting, I lost my cool on that one. That's the one I swore in. That's how mad I was. Yeah, I was out of character by doing that. He continued, for them to leak it, it backfired on them, Alex. They released all these tapes, and they shouldn't have. All these clips that they sound bit from these three depositions, not just one. 
Well, apology accepted. Yeah. Oh, also, I want to get before I miss it. Uh, the back to the Unity thing. That Unity CEO apparently sold a bunch of stock before making this announcement on Monday. Unity is publicly traded. I guess so. Uh, they uh, he that that was also something that was very suspicious. Like I'm about to make a statement that's probably going to tank our stock, so I might as well get some money out of it now. Cool. Allegedly, we love uh, we love electronic arts <laughs> and its consequences and Unity. Anyways, that's it. Make sure you like the video. Watch our most recent videos, including uh, Tech News Day, where we talked about that Tim Gurner fellow and also the, the Elon Musk biography and yeah. some of the stuff in it. And uh, yeah, the video before that one, which features the whole Mike Lindell segment that the, uh, you, you want to see it. You're you going to want to see that. You're going to want to see it. You'll get the reference then. Okay, yeah. like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, reply to a comment. Videos are up there now. We'll see you soon for Weekly Weird News. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.